Well, uh, tonight's guest uh, has been on with us, was on with us a short time ago. His ministry is the Messiah of Israel's ministry, and it's at Messiah of Ministries. Um, dot, or, Messiah of Israel Ministries dot org. He's an Orthodox Jew from from Israel. He's made a leap of faith to find salvation through Messiah Yeshua. Carl, Carl Gallops and I have talked many times, and in those talks, uh, Carl was talked about his book called The Rabbi That Found Messiah, and he mentions Zev very much. Zev has, uh, like I say, has been on the, the program with us before. He's on with us tonight. We're going to talk about more about the Kaduri revival and a tool that the devil is trying to use to stop Jews from being saved in Israel. So let's welcome now um, Messianic Rabbi Zev Pora. Are you there with us, Zev? Shalom, Pastor Dan. Yes, thank you for having me. It's a blessing to be here. Well, you sound really good tonight. I'm glad to have you back on. And a uh, really interesting topic that you chose uh, that you told me uh, a little bit about uh, that you're going to go into. I've never looked at this uh, replacement theology through the way that you've been talking about it. So I'll hand it to you. Well, you know, uh, Pastor Dan, uh, you know, maybe we should begin. Uh, I feel led in the Holy Spirit to begin in prayer because this is really a a anti anti Yeshua, anti Christ subject, and we need protection from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Avinu Shabashamayim Adon Olam, Heavenly Father, Lord Yeshua, we lift up your name, the name above all names, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, may it not be my words spoken tonight but your words through the Holy Spirit. In my weakness, may you be strong. We pray all this, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Always well, Pastor Dan, the, the, the subject of replacement theology has been around for a long time. And as we're entering the end times right now, we are in the end times, and many people will say, you know, the end times began when Yeshua descended up to the Father. Yes, but there's never been a generation closer to the end times than now. And the enemy, the devil, is working overtime to attack all, all believers, but especially the Jewish people, because he knows exactly, the, the devil knows the Bible. And there's two books that the devil hates the most. One is the book of Genesis, because he was defeated and crushed before the foundation of the world. And the other one is the book of Revelation, where he is defeated and goes to the lake of fire. That's why in the book of, the book of Revelation, it says two times, blessed are all who read the prophecy of this book. There's a special blessing over there, because that's where Yeshua comes back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, with fire in his eyes. That's where the devil gets sent to the lake of fire, and that's where we go home, the true bride of Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai, Yeshua the Messiah. Now, before we get into the, the, the subject of replacement theology, uh, first of all, for those who don't know, what is replacement theology? Well, in, in basic, it says that the church, the Gentile church, has replaced Israel. Israel is no longer part of God's plan, but the Gentile church has replaced Israel. Well, there is one big problem with that, with that doctrine, that explanation. It's not biblical. It's not in the Bible. You won't find a verse to back it up. You can't find a verse to back it up. It comes direct from the pit of hell. Now, these are very, very harsh words that I'm saying. The Bible says that love conquers all. The Bible says that there's no evangelism without love. There's no revival without the Word of God. But the Bible also says that we can't love over righteousness. Now, righteousness is the true written Word of God. And so I have to say where this comes from. It comes from 1 Timothy 4.1. 1 Timothy 4.1. This is the where, where replacement theology comes from. And I'm just going to read the small verse. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, that's the end times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It comes direct from the pit of hell. That's where replacement theology comes from. And when you're praying for Israel, we all know the, the Bible verse that says, 
Psalms 122, 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But if you know what you're praying about, it's much more powerful. And we're praying against, we're praying against evil spirits. We're praying against evil doctrine. And uh, look, I mean, one of the main problems right now in Israel is that it's already penetrated into Israel and touching non-believers. It's touching non-believers and it's hindering the gospel. But before we even uh, touch on that, I'd like to, first of all, explain God's perfect plan in the end times. Amen. There is no difference between Jew or Gentile. Okay? The Jew, the Bible was given to the Jewish people. The Leviticus laws were given to the Jewish people. All the Old Testament is written to the Jews. However, it says in Romans 11, 15, 17, that the Gentiles are grafted into the olive tree. It says in Romans 11, 23, that the Jew, the Jews are grafted back into the olive tree. And then we become one in Yeshua, Jew and Gentile. The question is, what's the olive tree? Well, if we go back to the book of Genesis, we see the tree of life. The tree of life is Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, it's very important to understand that everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the New, and the Bible is more spiritual than it is physical. Sometimes it's also spiritual and physical. Mostly it's spiritual. That's why Yeshua HaMashiach spoke in parables all the time. So you cannot understand the Bible if you don't have the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. You can only understand the physical. The only way you can understand the spiritual is through the Holy Spirit. That's why Yeshua said, Jesus, my sheep hear my voice. Now, so the tree of life in the Garden of Eden is Yeshua Mashiach. The olive tree in Romans 11, 15, 17, the grafted back in, is the tree of life, is Yeshua the Messiah. Now, Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua the Messiah is also, is also represents Israel because the Bible says in John 1, 1, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. When Yeshua came down and had his 33 uh, year ministry, when he came down as a man in the flesh, perfect, sinless, God, God and deity, but he was still a man in the flesh. When he came down, and as it says in John 1, 1, he was born to Mary. He was born, who was conceived through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. But he, he, he dwelt as a Jew. He went to the synagogues. He was a Jew. So the olive tree represents Israel. It represents Yeshua, the Messiah, the tree of life that we just uh, uh, spoke about in, in the Garden of Eve. So that when the church gets grafted into the olive tree, they get grafted into Yeshua the Messiah, they get grafted into the olive tree, and that's the true bride of Yeshua the Messiah. When a Jew, like me, praise God, gets grafted back into the olive tree, that's Romans 11, 23, I, get, I become a completed Jew, and we become one new man in Yeshua. So nothing in the Bible about replacement theology, it comes from the pit of hell, as I said in uh, the foundation is 1 Timothy 4.1. Now, I have to be uh, very careful when I say this, but, uh, I mean, it's the, it's the Word of God. Now, not every person that, that follows this doctrine of uh, replacement theology is an antichrist. A lot of people just don't know. They just don't know. They've been taught wrong. That's why it says in Hosea 4.6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Now, of course, again, that's written to the Jewish people. But if you're grafted into the olive tree, you become spiritually Israel. And all the Bible verses and all the blessings of the Bible apply to you. Genesis 12, 3, and I will bless those that bless Israel. So when it speaks in Hosea 4, 6, in Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. It speaks about the true bride of Yeshua right now, because right now we're in the new covenant. And Yeshua said in Matthew 5, 17, I did not come to abolish the Torah, or the prophets, but to fulfill it. So everything's been fulfilled through Yeshua the Messiah, but it still applies to us spiritually. And then you have the other side, the ones who are working for demons, the ones who are antichrists, the ones who are trying to destroy the gospel of Yeshua the Messiah. Those are the ones who penetrate this wrong doctrine of replacement theology. Yeah, amen. So if you have any questions, uh, Pastor Dan, then please ask no, me, because I... I've been... Uh, amen. I'd like to just bring a, a, a couple of small things forward. 
uh, recently we had Joel Richardson on here, folks, and I'm, I'm sure you heard the program. If you didn't, you can go to our archives and see it. But he wrote an, his newest book is When a Jew Rules the World, and that book is uh, explains replacement theology. It explains the covenants, and you would be amazed at, at how we, when you read that book, how that he even showed by a comparison basis of some uh, Christians over the years that had passed things like Luther and other ones that had uh, passed um, doctrines and different things that were identical to what Hitler had did. In fact, when we read it in our church, I had one elder read uh, from one list, which was Christians that were into the, uh, replacement theology, read their uh, doctrine or etiquette. And then uh, I had another elder read uh, another one that was exactly like it. And the other people were listening. They couldn't tell which one was from Hitler and which one was from the replacement theologians. And so it's a really horrendous thing what, what he's talking about. And if you need to know more about it, I'm sure you can email either one of us or you can call me and I'll talk to you about it. Or may, uh, I don't know that if you could Google it, if you'll get the right story, but back to you, Zeb. Well, thank you for that information. Um, yes, uh, if, if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, it says, For in one spirit were we all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether bond or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit, the spirit, the Ruach of the Holy Spirit. There is no difference when we're grafted into the olive tree, we become one new man. Now, being Jewish is not a ticket to heaven. Okay, if there's a Jew in Israel or any else, anywhere else in the world that comes to the Western Wall, to the Kotel, and he's praying, and he's calling on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he does not accept Yeshua as his personal Savior, the Bible says, no one gets to the Father, but only through Yeshua the Messiah. He is not part of the olive tree. He is not part of the true bride of Yeshua the Messiah in the same way if there's a Gentile believer that's teaching replacement theology or he believes replacement theology or he's following replacement theology he too is not and will not be grafted into the olive tree and he will not be part of the bride of Yeshua the Messiah the Bible Amen. says in Romans 1 16, 17 for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach for it is the power unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But as I said before, over and over, it never says to the Jew better. There's only one way, and that's the living Word of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the same fire that's written in the book of Revelation, that Yeshua will come back as the lion of, tribe, of the tribe of Judah with the fire in the eyes. Everything else is desolate. Now, we know that replacement theology has, has penetrated to the church it's been around for a long time, but right now it's exhalated to a new level. And as the Bible says, when the, Yeshua's disciples asked him, Master, Master, when are you coming back? And he answered them, not even the, the angels know when I'm coming back. So we don't know when Yeshua is coming back. I'm not a date setter. I'm not going to set dates. But, I'm, but I, I can see based on Matthew 24 and based on what Yeshua said and based on what's going on in the world, and based on prophecy that's being fulfilled, that we are living in the end times. There's never been a generation closer than this generation. And that's why Israel's being attacked more. Because it says in, in 2 Corinthians 3.16, it says, The veil will be lifted. And here's God's plan. Romans 11.25 says, Until the fullness of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles doesn't happen in one day. It's a process. And the process has begun. We are in the fullness of the Gentiles right now. And the more Gentile believers stand with Israel, the more they support Israel, the more the veil is being lifted. The more the veil is being lifted, we come to a closure of the fullness of the Gentile. The gospel goes back to Yerushalayim, back to Jerusalem, and we all meet the Lord in the air and go home and stand together, Jew and Gentile, forever and evermore in the new Jerusalem. We're now approaching the season of Passover. Yeshua is the Passover lamb. Yeshua fulfilled the Passover lamb once and for all. That's why he said in Matthew 5:17, I did not come to cancel the Torah or the prophets, but I came to fulfill it. He filled, he fulfilled the Passover, but he's, he'll come back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. So again, I have to say it again. 
Replacement theology is from the devil. It's direct from the pit of hell. Now, what's happening in Israel right now is as we're preaching the gospel, and there is a Kaduri revival going on. We're using uh, the book by, by Carl Gallup's, uh, published by WND, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, The Amazing Story of Yitzhak Kaduri, who found, who left a, a note in a, in a secret code revealing the name of, Ye, of Yeshua the Messiah. That book is being used right now as an evangelistic tool in Israel to lead Jews to the written word of God, and from the written word of God, the Holy Spirit opens their eyes, and we're seeing salvation after salvation after salvation. And the enemy doesn't like it. The enemy is going to try to stop it. But there's one problem. Romans 8.31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? The enemy can try to delay God's plan, but he can't stop it. And when we were doing evangelism in Israel, we encounter something that we have not seen in the past four or five years. Jews, when we preach the gospel to them, are saying, We don't want to hear anything about your gospel. We don't want to hear anything about your Bible because you want you want to, to take us out of being Jews and bring us to the church because you think that the church has replaced Israel. And, you know, when we hear things like that, it, it's shocking because, you know, we find out that, uh, you know, as there's true bride of Yeshua is coming to Israel and preaching the gospel and sharing the love of, of Yeshua with the Jewish people, so is the enemy sending these replacement theology, so-called Christians, that are not part of the bride of Yeshua, because the Bible says in Genesis 12:3, "I will bless those that bless Israel, and I will curse those that curse Israel." The Bible says in the book of Matthew, the five foolish virgins, uh, the ten virgins, five had oil and five didn't. The oil in the Bible represents blessing. You cannot. You cannot be in the blessing. You cannot have enough oil if you don't bless Israel. That's why it says in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those that bless Israel. So if you're not blessing Israel and you're teaching or believing replacement theology, you are not part of the bride of Yeshua, not because I say so, not because I'm Jewish, because thus says the God of Abraham, Isaacs, and Jacob. May his name be lifted up forever and evermore. The King of mm -hmm. kings and Lord of lords, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. So when we, uh, when we let, me, enter, let me break in because we, uh, we only got about a minute before we're going to cut off and go to break. Um, so let me say something and you can comment back and then we got to go for a break. Um, what I wanted to say about the virgins to the folks is, folks, the one thing you will notice when you study the parable of those virgins is that at first all the virgins were asleep and they had to be woke up. Um, amen. Not all of them just had their lamps trimmed or had enough oil to do so. Um, Zev, uh, I also want to say that, you know, there, I believe it's a sign of the end and coming off of what you said that more and more Christians are turning to their Hebrew roots and starting to study Torah and starting um, to keep the feast. And that's because they are turning support towards Israel and it's an end time thing. So, but what you're talking about tonight is, is something I believe that's trying to counteract that. Um, you want to give your website and then we're going to have to get out of here for break. Oh, yes, thank you. My website is messiahofisraelministries.org. That's messiahofisraelministries.org. Our ministry is operating in Israel. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, please send us an email. There's a contact form over there. We also have special prayers in Jerusalem. If you don't find our website or it's easier for you to go to Google, you can either Google my name, Zef Port, and it comes up, or just Google Messiah of Israel Ministries. Amen. And folks, where this program will be in the radio uh, program archives, there will be a link to his website. Um, consider you might want to support him and donate uh, to his ministry. Or of course, you may also want to just pray for him. Whatever, go over and check it out. Yes, but you know, before I, I continue, uh, Pastor Dan, I really want to, uh, first of all, thank the believers around the world, the ones who are standing with Israel, and I know there's many of them, and the ones that are bringing in uh, the gospel back to Jerusalem by blessing Israel, by standing with Israel, and of course by by being uh, spiritually Israel, because you know the Bible is very clear, very clear. For example, in Romans nine twenty four, it says, um, it says, "Over us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles." As it, as he says in the book of uh, Hosea, "I will call them my people who were not my people, and her beloved." Who is not my beloved? That's speaking about 
the Gentile church who loves Israel, who becomes spiritually Israel. It's very, very clear. There are many, many Bible passages to support that uh, that correct theology. So, mm-hmm. first of all, you know, we want to make it clear that we love uh, uh, the believers that are standing with Israel, and we love those that are going to be coming into understanding about uh, about Israel. You know, it's it's a it's a learning pro- uh, process. All of us are learning. Uh, we don't know everything. We stu- no matter how much we study the Bible, we can still learn more and more and more. And we won't know any everything until Yeshua the Messiah comes back as a lion of the tribe of Judah. So I want to make that point very clear. But again, we cannot love people over righteousness. But it's very important to remember First Peter four eight. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. So we're praying for Israel. We're praying for the the, the churches around the world that are are teaching this replacement theology that they would repent, that they would turn to the God of Abraham, Isaacs, and Jacob. Uh, before it's too late. Now, regarding uh, what's going on in Israel, I would like to share a little testimony of how we found out uh, that replacement theology has been uh, penetrating into Israel, and it's happening. It's been happening only in the past year. Uh, before that, we've never encountered. We never went to a non-believer Jew in Israel, and he spoke about replacement theology. That really proves that we're in the end times, because the enemy knows his days are numbered. The enemy knows the time is near, and he's trying to destroy and distract and, and, and take with him as much as he can to the lake of fire. But again, you can't stop God's plan. There is a revival in Israel. The revival is connected to, um, to the end times. It's also connected to the, the wonderful evangelistic tool, the rabbi who found Messiah. Jews are coming to faith like never before, and no one can stop the gospel of Yeshua the Messiah. And here's mm-hmm. what happened. We were in, uh, doing an outreach in, uh, in Yerushalayim in Jerusalem. And we were witnessing to a group of Jews that were not Orthodox. They were just, you know, regular, uh, uh, I would say, secular, uh, believing God Jews. And a young man named Roy uh, approached us, and he said, look, I, you shouldn't be here. We don't want to hear anything about your, your Bible. And I said, wait a minute. The Bible that I'm holding in the hand is a, it's an Old Testament. It's a Jewish Bible. And he says, yes, but the way you read the Jewish Bible is not true. I said, well, what do you mean by that? And then he said, you want me to become a Christian? You want me to leave Israel? You think that the church has replaced Israel, and you're trying to take me out of Israel, and you're saying that there's no more Israel, God has left Israel? I asked him, where does it say that in the Bible? He says, look, there's, a, there's, there's many Christians coming here to Jerusalem and teaching that. You know what, Pastor Dan, I was in complete shock. It was the first time I ever heard something like that from a non-believing Jew. And I started to realize that as we're standing with Israel, as we're praying for Israel, as believers around the world are praying for Israel, they need to know about this because this is strong spiritual warfare. This is something we have not encountered in Israel before. This is something new, and it's a danger. And you know what? It, it, we talk about also uh, uh, the danger of, uh, of, of teaching about the synagogue of Satan, that the Jews are a synagogue of Satan. That's taken Revelation 2.9 totally out of context, too. We'll touch on that in a few minutes. But uh, I really didn't know what to what to say tell him. I was uh, I was hit hard and uh, and it, I wasn't ready for it. But I started to pray, right. and the Holy Spirit just gave me the the correct words. And you know what? I I always use simple evangelism. I believe that the Bible was written not only to the professor; it was written to the simple man. The gospel is simple. The message is simple. Man complicates the the message. And I just used a very very simple example. And I asked Roy a question. I said, Roy, if the Israeli police force, there's a police officer that gets convicted of a crime, does he represent all the police force? (laughs) And Roy said, no. And I said, then why do you think that all Christians represent the true Bible? And he, he started to think for a moment. The Holy Spirit was working on him. And he says, you have a good point there. And I said, did you read the Bible? And read that it says that God has replaced Israel? He said, no. I said, then why do you believe it? And he says, and then suddenly something amazing happened. He said, let's read the Bible together and see what it says. We sat down. I invited him to lunch. We started to read the Bible together. It was a process of a few months. And the Bible says that God will turn the evil into good. God will take the bad and turn it, the bad motivation, and and turn it into good. And Roy gave his life to Yeshua the Messiah. Oh, amen. So God used this situation 
of replacement theology to try to penetrate, to destroy God's end time plan. But God is in control. God, he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. No one can stop the Bible. No one can stop the gospel. The gospel will go back to Jerusalem. We will go up and meet the Lord in the air. And we will worship him forever and evermore in the new Jerusalem. And Mr. Lucifer, Shachar ben Halel, will go to the lake of fire. So what I'm trying to say is, this is a product of the end times. This is a product of the believers like you, Pastor Dan, and other believers that are listening today on radio and that will listen in the future that are praying and standing for Israel. So I want to say thank you. Keep on standing for Israel because it's working. The devil has already been defeated before the foundation of the world. And we're going to keep on preaching the gospel no matter what. But it's important that you know how to pray for Israel. And praying for Israel also includes replacement theology that has penetrated into Jerusalem, into other cities of Israel, and is trying to stop the Jewish people from hearing the true written word of God. Well, amen. But I sure am glad that you brought this forward. But, you know, here in America, you know, I, when I try to explain, you know, uh, the truth, you know, to people, I run into it all the time because of many of the mainstream teach, uh, uh, mainstream churches have a lot of replacement theology embedded in them, whether it's uh, replacement theology concerning changing the name so that end time events look like it's about America or so on and so forth. Or, or it, It's in so many different ways. I just had never heard this testimony that you gave tonight. And which is a powerful testimony. And folks, you know, you, you hear me talk all the time. You need to listen to what Zeb says and pray in this manner against this that's coming against Israel. Back to you, Zeb. Amen. Amen to that. And you know what? We have the power. The Bible says that we have power in prayer. You know, you, you know Yeshua, God spoke the world into existence. There's power when we confess words. And the enemy knows that it's all about Israel in the end times. He knows the gospel is going back. So he's going to attack Israel, number one. He's going to attack the church, number one, in order to try to, try to stop God's plan. So if we, I really encourage people, you know, don't, don't believe what a man says. Don't believe what I say. Don't believe what anybody else says. Just read the written word of God. Uh, of course, God can use, uh, you know, believers to speak the truth. But please, check your Bible. Read the Bible in the correct context. And make sure that what you're being taught or what, what's being said is in the Bible. Pray to God for discernment. You know, the Bible says in the book of James, if anyone lacks of wisdom, let him ask and he shall receive. The Bible also says, ask and you shall receive if it's the will of God. It's the will of God that you know the truth. It's the will of God that you know the written word of God. So based on James, ask and you shall receive uh, if you lack of wisdom. And based on God's on God's word that he wants you to know the truth, if you ask, the Holy Spirit will reveal the truth to you. So it's very important, number one, to read the uh, the Bible in the correct context. It's very important to read the Bible understanding that it's more spiritual than it is physical. And it's very important to understand that everything was written to Israel in the beginning. But when you become a new covenant believer, and you come in covenant with Israel, and you bless Israel, you become spiritually Israel, and all the blessings apply to you as spiritual Israel. So uh, it's very important to understand that, and it's very important when you pray for Israel to understand that it's an attack on Israel. And you know what? It, it, replacement theology is not the only attack. You know, I've been hearing uh, uh, many people say that, you know, Israel has not just been replaced by the church. Israel is the, the synagogue of Satan. And they like to base that doctrine based on Revelation 2.9. Well, first of all, if that would be true, that all of Israel is the synagogue of Satan, then Genesis 12:3 is not true. Bless those that bless Israel. The olive tree is not true. The Bible is not true. You might as well just go pick up a Quran or some other kind of religious book because you're not reading the true Word of God. You're against the Word of God, and uh, you know that that's really uh, what I have to say here. I'd like to read uh, Revelation 2:9 because I believe that the synagogue of Satan ties in. With replacement theology, it's all a mixture of, uh, of uh, the last day's antichrist mission of the enemy to try to attack and destroy Israel. But also, it's, um, it's a danger and a hindrance here in Israel, as I said. So let's mm -hmm. read Revelation 2.9. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich 
and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Where does it say in that verse that all Jews are the synagogue of Satan? It says very clear over here, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews. They're not Jews. They say they're Jews and are not, yeah. but are the synagogue of Satan. So the words are very clear over there. And uh, the synagogue of Satan is referred to in Revelation 2.9 is referring to a synagogue of Jews who rejected Yeshua the Messiah, severely persecuted real Jewish believers, uh, the Jews of the synagogue of Satan were probably, they were, you know, Hellenized, meaning they were uh, corrupted by Greek, uh, by Greek uh, paganism, uh, Greek religion. They called themselves Jews. They were not Jews. They were corrupt by the Greek culture. And uh, they were misleading other Jews. That's what it's talking about, where, where it says um, the church, the synagogue of, of Satan. In nowhere is it talking about Israel today. In nowhere is it talking about all Jews it's speaking about Hellenistic uh, uh, believers or, or, or ones that call themselves believers that said they were Jews, but they're not Jews, and they were, they were penetrating the lie of being Jews into the synagogue and persecuting the real uh, uh, Jewish uh, believers. Replacement theology is a false teaching that is connected direct with the doctrine of the synagogue of Satan. I want to also say that there's also, a, if, if people are teaching that Israel is the synagogue of Satan. If people are teaching that Israel has been replaced by the church, this can hint, this can trigger another Holocaust. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's go with this. Um, you know, I, I have heard Zev. I've heard so many times over over the years. People pull that. That's one of the scriptures they pull out like a gun. Is that well? They're of the synagogue of Satan without truly listening to the world word because you explained it just by simply reading the word it says that was that say they are jews and are not so it's clearly uh the scripture doesn't lie the scripture says they're saying they're jews but they're not so you can't accuse the jew of it because the bible says that they weren't jews but what a twist and people believe it uh it's horrendous back to you absolutely and you know and i also read it and when i do a study of a uh, of the Bible, you know, by His grace and and in His glory, I'm able to read it also in Hebrew because Hebrew is my mother tongue. So when I study a scripture like that, I also read the Hebrew, and it's very clear in Hebrew. They're not Jews, and, uh, and you know, people just take it and twist it around. Look at the Apostle Paul. When the Apostle the Apostle Paul, he thought that he was serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob before he was a believer. He thought he thought that he was uh, doing God a favor, that he was uh, really walking in the spirit by by persecuting Jewish believers, by right. killing Christians. It wasn't until he had the Damascus Road experience and the Holy Spirit fell on him that he became a believer in Yeshua. But it, it nowhere is it talking that he was uh, that he was part of the of the synagogue of mm -hmm. Satan. That has nothing to do with it. It's out of out of scripture. It contradicts scripture. So people really have to be careful when they listen to other people and they take scripture out of out of context. And many times I hear, you know, just uh, uh, this morning I received an email from uh, a new believer in, in Israel, and he, and he keeps on saying, you know, uh, things are not working out for me here. Uh, Satan is attacking me. Satan is doing this. And I have to tell you, you know, if you're covered by the blood of Yeshua the Messiah, Satan can't touch you. He can try to attack you. But there's no power more stronger than the blood of Yeshua the Messiah. And many times it's not Satan that's blocking our blessings. We block our own blessings by false doctrine, by teaching false doctrine, by taking scripture out of uh, out of uh, out of okay. context, and by being out of His will. If that's why it says in John 15, "If you abide in Me, I will abide in you." How do you abide in Yeshua the Messiah? By being in His living Word of God. When Yeshua said, "If anyone wishes to follow Me, he must pick up his cross daily and deny himself." What does that mean? It means put Yeshua first. If you don't put Yeshua first, you won't be ready. If you don't put Yeshua first, you won't be you won't meet him in the air. And if you don't bless Israel, you won't have enough oil because oil represents blessing. The door will be shut. And I just pray that the ones that are listening to this that believe in replacement theology, the Holy Spirit will really speak to them and they would turn to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and not stop their own blessing, 
but open the blessing. And the wonderful thing about being a believer and being blessed is that we bless others and the blessing just keeps on flowing over and over again. So stand with Israel, pray for Israel, pray against this replacement theology. As I said, it comes direct from the pit of hell. We are in the end times. It's being penetrated into Israel. But the good news is that we're seeing revival in Israel. We call it the Kaduri revival because the Jews like to turn to rabbis for interpretation of scripture. So the book, the rabbi who found Messiah, who is the greatest rabbi who lived in Israel in the past 200 years, is leading Jews to the written word of God. And as the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're seeing massive amount of revival in Israel. Many of them you can see in picture and video format on our website, messiahofisraelministries.org. Of course, what you see on the internet, what you get in your newsletters if you sign up on our website is just a small percentage of what's really happening in Israel. You need to understand, because we're in the end times, because Jews are being attacked, because there is persecution, not everybody's willing to be on video. Not everybody's willing to be in picture format. But the ones who are, are blessing the true bride of Yeshua the Messiah. And no matter how much replacement theology is trying to destroy the church, is trying to destroy the true believers in Israel, if God is for us, who can be against us? We will not stop yeah. preaching the gospel until all Israel is saved. Romans 11:26. And as we said, the true Israel is the Jew and Gentile, the one new man. Yes, Amen. Um, and that's that's very true about people in their pictures. You know, I used to, when we first started our ministry. I used to take a lot of pictures, you know, of the people that we ministered to. But you know that as time goes on, you know, now most of them don't want to have their pictures taken. And people say to me, well, Pastor Dan, how come you don't put all those pictures up that you used to? What's for the reason that you say, Zev, is that they don't want persecuted and, they, they, you know, at all whatsoever. And so I don't blame them. They don't want their, their pictures or their testimony. But that don't mean people aren't getting help or people aren't getting saved. It's just that it's getting harsher and harsher. Those people right now are under extreme persecution. Back to you, you've got about a minute left. Well, yes, as I said before, I thank the believers around the world that are standing with Israel. And really, it's uh, believers like uh, like you and other believers around the world that are supporting our ministry, Messiah of Israel Ministries, uh, dot org, and enabling us to preach the gospel. Because you need to under- people need to understand, we're in Israel. We're not getting support from Israel. We're not getting support from the government. We're not getting support from the Orthodox Jews. Our support comes from overseas. So it's very important that believers like you who are standing with Israel, who understand who the true Israel, who understand the importance of bringing the gospel back to Jerusalem and meeting the Lord in the air and going to the new Jerusalem, that you support our ministry. So if anybody really is felt by, is led by the Holy Spirit to support our ministry and to help us, we are preaching the gospel. We also give food to, uh, to the elderly, to the sick, to the Holocaust survivors. But you know, the Bible says, Yeshua said, uh, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So we don't just give them food and love them to hell. We give them the full gospel. And I think that's, uh, that's important to emphasize. You know, it's, it's, you, if you give someone food, it's a blessing. But if you give yeah. them food without the gospel, you're loving them to hell. So, you know, yeah. we give them the full gospel, and that's what the ministry is all about. We preach to Orthodox Jews. We preach to our brothers, uh, uh, the Arabs. We go into mosques. We preach to Muslims because we believe that, uh, you know, our, the Arabs also have the blessing of Ishmael. The only way there's going to be any peace in the Middle East, whether it's temporary now, is through Yeshua the Messiah, and eternal, the bride of Yeshua the Messiah, the ones who fall into the olive tree is through Yeshua the Messiah. So we preach also to the Arabs, and we're seeing great success there. Praise the Lord. We give all the glory to Yeshua the Messiah. We're small people with a big God. And again, uh, visit us at messiahofisraelministries.org. Look at our video. Sign up to get our email letters. Send us your prayer requests. We'll pray for you in Jerusalem. And uh, may the Lord bless you and all you're doing also, Pastor Dan. Well, amen. um, well, we're going to have to cut it off. We're right, we're out of time. I got less than a minute. But folks, uh, go check him out. Messiah, Messiah of Israel Ministries dot org. There will be a link on our website. Thanks a lot, Zeb. I, I love you, brother, and we'll be praying for you. And we'll do this again soon. You be blessed. Bye bye. I love you too, Pastor Dan, and Shalom. Shalom.